Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to make some aluminum ingots that have the Zelda Triforce on them. So this video is a lost foam casting, metal casting video. I first made the Triforce logos out of polystyrene foam XPS. The foam is half inch. I carved out the design with my CNC router. After I carved them out, I punched each one out of the sheet of polystyrene foam. So I had each one individual. I inspected each one of them before I applied a thin layer of watered down joint compound to them. The joint compound is used to help preserve the smoothness of the foam and kind of get into all the smaller spots. But before applying the joint compound, I sprayed it down with some soapy water. The soapy water is used to break the surface tension between the foam and the drywall joint compound. Coat the entire thing and let them sit for 24 to 48 hours to let them cure enough to cast in metal. So when they're all finished drying, they are now ready to be buried in some fine dry sand. I coated only the front and the outer edges, but I did not coat the back. For these, to me, the back is not that important. And to be honest, they didn't come out as bad as I thought they would. Now, this is the sand and the metal container that I'm going to be burying these into. Now, the sand has to be dry because if the sand has any moisture in them, it will then ruin the joint compound that you apply to the front of the pattern. So you can see the way I'm placing these in the container. I'm doing this because I'm using two pouring basins for this pour, as you probably saw in the first 10 seconds of the video. I wasn't really sure how I wanted to do this. I just figured it, this is probably the easier way. Instead of me gluing more things to the foam, like adding a sprue to it, these are just cut right out of the polystyrene foam and ready to cast. So make sure you vibrate it while you're filling it and vibrate it once you get to the end. And this here is the pouring cups I spoke about before. And you can see how I'm surrounding two of the foam patterns with one can. After you place the pouring cups in there, now it's time to lock those cans in place by filling the rest of the container up with sand. Now this is kind of needed. So when you're pouring the molten metal into the cans, the cans doesn't accidentally fall over. Surrounding it with sand does a really good job of locking it in place. So now it's time to melt down some aluminum. And I'm going to be using the Viver 12 kg propane furnace. If you'd like to get one for yourself, definitely check out the affiliate link in the description below. You could use a coupon to save 5%. In today's melt, I'm going to be melting down some soda can tops. That's right. I have been collecting soda can tops for quite some time now. I have this little tool that easily removes the top off of the can. So anytime I drank out of a can, I would easily remove the top and throw it into a bucket for a day like today. So let's turn on the propane and light this furnace.
almost lost you there. Get back in that crucible. Alright guys, so in this segment I had to mute the audio. I sped this clip up so fast that it just sounded like static and it was extremely loud so even if I turned the volume down it still didn't sound good. But rest assured there will be volume in three, two, one. <laughs> So you might be wondering why just the tops and not the whole can. Well if you notice it's much easier and quicker to load the crucible with just the tops than it is the whole can. Plus there's a lot less slag. And yeah it looks like there's a lot of slag here but if I melted down the same amount of can as I did the tops I'd have probably three more times slag. So I wanted to add a little bit more metal to the crucible because I wasn't sure if just using the amount of aluminum I got from the can tops was going to be enough. If you're new to Lost Foam Casting, it really is quite simple. You just pour the molten metal into the mold that you previously made and it vaporizes the foam and takes its shape. After some time and the metal that you see I'm dipping this stirring stick in has solidified, it's now time to remove them from the sand. I'm going to be cleaning this one off with a wire brush so we can get a better look at it and then dip them into water to cool them off.
in some cases you could just pull this can right off but in my case I couldn't because there was actually quite a bit of aluminum inside the can basically locking it in place so just take a pair of snips and some pliers and peel away at the can I actually had to put it in the vice grip to get a better grip on it so I can peel away more of the can to be able to remove it So now I'm going to be disconnecting these from, I guess you would call it, the screws using a hacksaw. I had to make four cuts to separate each one of these from the top. Then I'm going to take it to the vise to hold it in place while I wire wheel off the black residue off of it. Now I'm going to use my belt sander to get rid of the little piece left over from when I cut it off with a hacksaw. Lastly, I'm going to shine up the front of them using my lathe with a sanding disc, starting at 100 grit all the way up to 1000 to really give it a great shine. Now for one of them, I decided to give it an aluminum black finish. I'm going to coat the entire piece with this aluminum black finish, trying to get mainly the bottom, but it's kind of impossible to do that. It just means you have to do a lot more sanding, that's all. So I'm gonna sand the top until it reveals the finish, and now it's going to look like this. So now I have four aluminum Triforce coins, metals, I don't know what you want to call them, but whatever you want to call them, I think they came out fantastic. If you like this video, definitely smash that like button, leave a comment below, and subscribe. And stay tuned for my next video.